families already struggling with the cost of living are finding it even more difficult to afford things like basic baby formula milk. The government provides food vouchers for low-income families, but recent research by the Food Foundation found the vouchers don't even cover the cost of the cheapest tub of baby formula in the supermarket. One couple told Good Morning Britain what they have had to do to ensure their children get fed. It was unbearable some weeks, it was hard enough living day to day, and it was heartbreaking that you're waiting for this email to come through from Healthy Start to say that the voucher had been awarded, just so I knew I'd be able to go out and get bits in, but again, it was literally getting enough in to see us through for the week, and sometimes me and my partner were going without food. I eat one meal a day, I'm just concentrating on making sure, because she's pregnant, she's getting food. The kids are getting food. I may end up heavily relying on the likes of baby banks, food banks for help. And I don't call myself proud, but I feel proud enough to say that I can do it myself. And it upsets me when I have to rely on other organisations to help. It's ridiculous. Like, that Healthy Start voucher does help, but it's nowhere near enough. Yeah. We're stressed about, can we provide for this baby? Can Will this baby be able to eat if we, if we can't or don't breastfeed? Is a massive concern. Well, there'll be those amongst you watching who are thinking, yeah, that's us, that's me. We're joined now by Anna Taylor from the Food Foundation, who's calling on the government to urgently upgrade the value of the Healthy Start vouchers, and by former England Children's Commissioner for England, Anne Longfield. Welcome both. Anna, start with you. How have we got into the position where one of these vouchers won't even pay for, won't even buy a cheap tub of baby formula milk? Yeah, I mean, I think we all um, share the view that every child in Britain, no matter their background, should have the same opportunity to thrive. And we've had a situation, we've been tracking food insecurity amongst families uh, for several years now. And we find that food insecurity rates have doubled during the cost of living crisis. But mm. we're really worried about families with very young children, preschool children. And our data shows that for children with families under the age of four, 27% of them are currently experiencing food insecurity. And we have this scheme, Healthy Start, which provides a digital card for parents who are on a very low income with very young children. And that card allows them to buy, is restricted in terms of what it allows you to buy, right. fruits and vegetables, infant formula and milk. So you couldn't buy chocolate with it? You can't buy chocolate no. with it, no, exactly. Um, there are a lot, uh, several restrictions. Families know that and they find it helpful that it, like, ring fences a bit of money so mm -hmm. that it can't be raided for other emergencies. Mm -hmm. Um, the scheme at the moment provides the equivalent of £4.25 a week, um, double that if you have a child under the age of one, but that amount has remained static since April 2021. And, of course, in the intervening period, food prices have just gone through the roof, and infant formula in particular has gone up by about... 20%. So it's our old friend inflation that's done this. Exactly. Yeah. And the government has really overlooked this scheme um, and hasn't kept the voucher in line with inflation. And, of course, we're seeing the consequences of that, as we saw in Hartlepool there, parents cutting back on what they're eating. But they may also be forced into more unimaginable, really, risky behaviours where they might be thinking, um, I need to water down the feeds, I need to... Some parents are reporting reheating milk or buying milk that's at low cost because it's gone past its sell-by date or stealing milk, frankly, infant formula. Why is reheating... I can see why it would be less nutritious, but why is it dangerous to reheat? Well, because of the, ba the bacteria that you... That, that or, grow or water, in sorry, sorry, I meant to say watering down. Oh, I? watering down. Yeah. But, um, well, because um, a baby's nutritional requirements are really well understood. We mm. know that they need a certain amount of nutrients to get their brains and their bodies growing optimally. And so if you're watering down milk, of course, you're reducing the intensity of the nutrients in that feed, right. and that then creates risks for your baby. Right. Because, of course, while inflation has come down to 4.6% uh, last month, food inflation still remains high, and the average price of baby formula has risen by 22% <laughs> between 2021 and 2023. When you campaign the government on this and say, because as our figures show, the cheapest baby formula is £9, but the food voucher is £8.50 a week to exactly. pay for that formula. So when you go to the government and say can't even buy formula for a baby with this healthy start or this healthy food uh, voucher what do, what's the response 
Well, I think, to be honest, the, the government, as I said, has just has, has overlooked this scheme. It's a highly targeted, quite yeah. small scheme that has really, really strong impacts. The other um, point, problem with the scheme at the moment is that a third of those that are actually eligible, and that amounts to about 140,000 children, mm -hmm are not on the scheme, um, even though they're eligible for it. Why not? Because they often don't even know that they are eligible. And you would like to change that? We'd like to change it to an opt-out scheme rather than an opt-in scheme. You automatically get enrolled. Exactly, because when you've just had a newborn baby, mm. it's kind of the last thing you're thinking about. If you've also got financial pressures, is thinking I've got to fill in a lot of forms here. Yeah. Um, um, you used to be... Um, in charge of our children's welfare, former <laughs> children's commissioner for England. Why is it that these very targeted schemes to help children are not being uprated along mm. with inflation? Well, so often decisions, as we've seen so much of the COVID inquiry, get overlooked um, by government. And this is a very targeted scheme. It wasn't linked and indexed in in terms of, um, uh, in terms of inflation when it was set up. It's seen as a health scheme. It sits over in the Department of Health. So I think it, it literally does get overlooked. And so often in these situations, it needs a champion within government to make sure right. that it's looked after. So, so is the solution currently then to raise the value of the voucher to, what is it, £9, which would then pay for a, a, a tub, and at the same time link the voucher to, yes. in, to inflation? Yes, Index I it. think so. Problems, problem solved. Well, it comes as part of a wider increase needed in understanding that actually our vulnerable infants, our infants in the early years, are are, you know, are in most important citizens. And actually, there has been a huge churn of Secretaries of State for Health over the last 10 years, six of them. We now have a minister, actually, Andrea Leadsom, who has campaigned very much for children in the early years. So, you know, the message to her really is, I'm sure she's already on the case, there's an autumn statement here. There's an opportunity yeah. to change that. But without having that focus and that champion with the government, yeah. So often it gets... Over the other thing that might be addressed in the autumn statement, and we will speak to the Chief Secretary of the Treasury in just a moment, is that the two million people currently out of work on incapacity benefits, they may be forced to look for work that they can do. These are people with mobility or mental health problems. They're going to be told, look for work you could do from home or you could face losing more than £4,500 in benefits. Is this motivation? to people well, who are currently work shy and could be working? Or is this going to be a chilling warning to people who actually genuinely can't work? Well, I think for many, it will be chilling. Um, I think, you know, generally, these individuals want to work. Families want to work. They want to provide for their children. They can't work, yes. and that's very clear. But they need proper mental health support. They need pop, proper support to be able to get well and also support to get into the workplace. Now, that doesn't happen overnight, but it needs to start early and we need to understand okay. the real... Well, Susanna account. says we'll be putting that point to Laura Trott very, very shortly. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, you both. both. Very much indeed. Anna Taylor from the Food Foundation and Anne Longfield, former Children's Commissioner for England.